All right, what's up, YouTube Counter Punch Boxing Talk? How are you doing out there, YouTube land, wherever you may be? Uh, all right, look, let me address something. 30 seconds. Look, the clock is at 15. At 45, I will be done. I read comments. I read every single comment. You know, a lot of you guys, oh, I'm leaving the channel because you said this and you said, look, I can't please everybody, okay? There is no clickbait. I make three to four dollars per video. I'm not going to sell my channel out for, you know, the, the cost of a candy bar. Okay, moving on. All right, so I recently. I just sat through an hour-long conference call, Canelo Golovkin, okay, but basically this was Canelo's call. Now, tomorrow, or I got to check the, the email, or the following day, we will get Golovkin's conference call. Not quite sure when. I need to... I need to do my homework and figure that out. And actually, uh, I should have an email. But but anyway, basically, this is exclusively Canelo, his team, Oscar De La Hoya. You know, basically, the press calls in. You've got, like, you know, uh, Dan Raphael, Lance Pugmire, ESPN, Deportes, you know, all these people asking questions. And, a lot, you know, a lot of them are fluff questions. So uh, I'll kind of go through those real quickly, and then I'll, I'll get to the good shit, all right? Now, look, remember me telling you this, okay? Remember me telling you what I'm about to tell you. Okay, what I'm going to go over today, just take note. You will see all the articles, all the YouTube channels. They're going to put out a million videos like, oh, Canelo guarantees a knockout. And da, 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 da. You know, they're going to chop this shit up 10 ways from Sunday and, you know, basically get your click. So what, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I'm going to give it to you in one shot. OK, but let me get through the boring shit. Basically, uh, here's Oscar De La Hoya. He's saying, you know, the, the tickets are sold out, sold out in 10 days now. 10 days. That's incredible. But, uh, you know, I think a lot of the ticket sales actually went to these companies that buy bulk ticket amounts. You know, they they basically buy it in bulk and then they, you know, they, they jack the price up. But, you know, a lot of it was was fans, too. So uh, but sold out. OK. And then he reminded us that uh, it will be on uh, Mexican Independent Weekend, September 16th, 24 or HBO 24 seven. Now, remember, August 26, right after the uh, COVID. Kodo Kamigai fight, which, by the way, I want to talk about that fight. Probably my next video, uh, immediately following that fight, we're going to get the Canelo Golovkin 24-7 HBO, which I like. Um, and, you know, one, and I'm reading my notes here. Okay, one thing I wrote, and I, it, look, no disrespect, okay, I wrote, Canelo's, Canelo and his team need to learn English, okay? They need to learn to speak English. English because you know you have people calling in like me I could ask a question and then they have to translate it okay and then Canelo will give his answer and then they've got to translate it and tell me what he said it's ridiculous like you know you are a multi-million dollar boxing megastar learn to speak fucking English I mean seriously like if I went to Mexico and I became a big Mexican boxing star and I'm an American I'd, I'd be boy I'd be blah, 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 you hear me speaking some Spanish like I'd be a Spanish speaking fool, okay? Hola, 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 como esta? You know, I mean, I'd be speaking Spanish like you never heard somebody speak Spanish. So seriously, he needs to learn to speak English, okay? All right, uh, whew, I had to get that out. I had to get that off my chest, okay? I had to get that out. All right, first up to bat, Dan Raphael. He said, okay, you've had a lot of knockouts, Kirkland, Con. <laughs> Okay, I, look, it's it's gonna be hard for me to relay this this information to you guys and not give my own two cents, but I'll try not to because I just laugh at those knockouts. But anyway, you've had a lot of knockouts, Kirkland, Con, you know, blah blah. Uh, do you think Gennady Golovkin and his team underestimates your punching power? Okay, you know, basically saying, you know, uh, you know, you're knocking guys out. Do you think because maybe maybe he's saying because it's like Amir Khan. I mean, come on. I mean, uh, do we need to do we need to go any or do we need to get into that? Okay, no, we don't. And uh, basically, he said, look, styles make fights. And he said, uh, but he said, but how do you say it he says styles make fights but i want to win by knockout okay there he goes 
uh, I want to win by knockout, and he knows that. Okay, he said, you know, that's kind of interesting, all right? You know, he's asked, you know, do you think, basically, do you think you're going to knock out Golovkin, and do you want to win by knockout? And, and, and the way it was worded, he was like, do you want a 12-round decision or a knockout? He said, I want to win by knockout, and Golovkin knows it, okay? But then he went on to say, but Gennady Golovkin probably wants to win by a knockout too, okay? But I think it's hilarious, though, that they bring up, why haven't I changed the picture, guys? Guys, sorry. Let me show you something here, too. By the way, current pictures of Gennady Golovkin, all right? Uh, Dan Raphael, do you think there could be a knockdown? Okay, and he says, look, you know, you've been rocked a couple of times. Gennady Golovkin has never been rocked. And pretty much Canelo's like, yeah, you know, he says, but, you know, these are kind of generic bread and butter questions, but he's like, well, of course there could be a knockdown. He's like, and I'm looking for a knockdown. I'm looking for, you know, a knockout, a knockdown. You know, basically he's saying, I'm going to throw everything at him but the kitchen sink. Okay, he's like, I'm going to put something on him. Ajax won't take off. Okay, that kind of shit, right? You know, I mean, and and look, I, 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 you know, I take him serious. I do. I think that Canelo is going to go out there and, you know, he's going to, uh, you know, he's going to be throwing, throwing punches with bad intent. And they both are. OK, they both are. Um, and I'm not going to say anything about these pitchers, because every time I say anything about Gennady Golovkin, you know, I get crucified in the comment section. So, you know, whatever. I'm not going to say shit. There it is. Have a peek. Look at it. I'll continue. Um, and, you know, he basically said, you know, look, we both have knockout power, so anything can happen. OK, uh, now one thing. <laughs> that was kind of funny. Dan Raphael, basically, he asked Oscar De La Hoya, you know, he said, uh, you know, do you think this is like the, the best fight at middleweight, the biggest ever, like of all time, right? And Oscar says, yeah, I do. And he says, well, wait a minute, you know, well, what, what about like a Hagler Hearns? And he says, well, you know, uh, there's portions of the fight that, that will be bigger, you know, as far as the press and this and that. And he says, now the history, we don't know because, you know, Hagler, Hagler Hearns, actually, if you remember, if you go back and, and look at history leading up to the fight, sure, it was a, a big fight, right? I mean, you know, they, they really promoted it and everything, but, you know, it kind of, it kind of, I don't know, got a, got a whole new life after the fight. I mean, that's how boxing history happens. You know, it's afterwards. I usually say that, you know, the next 10 years will, will create boxing history. You know, whatever happens today will be, you know, legit history in five to 10 years. So, you know, I, I get it. But he was basically saying that, yes, he thinks it will be the biggest and it will be compared to Hagler Hearns. Now, is he selling the fight? Probably, right? Probably. Um... And then, you know, and he, and he did point out, you know, he said, you know, like Oscar versus Hopkins, uh, Bernard Hopkins versus Trinidad. Uh, and then he threw in there, Dan Raphael threw in there Canelo Cotto, you know, and of course Hagler Hearns. He was like, you know, can you can, can we compare it to those, you know, the, the magnitude of those two particular fights? And he said, yes. So, um, and I even wrote, I wrote, yes, on paper, it will be the biggest fight, but it depends on what the two fighters bring that night. Uh, then Canelo said, said, you know, Canelo, he said, you know, I in quotations, he said, I'll give it a hundred percent. So, you know, I think we have a very motivated Canelo, but you know, that, that, that motivation, maybe that overconfidence is going to hurt him. Now, ESPN Deportes, again, will this be the biggest fight in Mexican history? Of course, Canelo's like, yes, it depends on, uh, he said, actually, he, he did say, he's like, it depends on Gennady Golovkin. He's like, I'll be ready, but it depends on Golovkin. He's like, I'm going to do my part. Okay, here's another question. Do you want to win by KO or, uh, again, they kept asking the same shit. You know, will a 12-round decision be okay? He says, yes, I want to win by a KO. Uh, you know, the fans want it. I want it. That kind of thing. Uh, and then Canelo went on to say, <laughs> he went on to say, look, we asked for the fight. Okay, this is where he got a little pissed off. Like, you know, we asked for the fight, which I'm sitting there thinking like, no, 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 you didn't. You vacated. You vacated the WBC and you ran and then you were basically pressured, you know, backed into a corner, pressured and took the fight. But he's basically saying, you know, that, but just to put it on record, guys, just so all of you out there know, Canelo, you know, he, he says that they wanted the fight, you know, basically like they had to twist, uh, you know, Gennady Golovkin's arm in order to get the fight and uh, Abel Sanchez and you know, K2 promotions, but, uh, 
He said, you know, we asked for the fight, we won it, and there is absolutely no fear, okay? So it was kind of weird. Whenever asked a question, you know, about a knockout, do you want to win by a knockout, he went on to say that, you know, we wanted the fight, we asked for it, and there is no fear, you know? Like, it's like, where the hell did that come from? You know what I mean? You know, it's kind of like if you go around talking about, you know, no fear, it usually means there is there is definitely fear. So I don't know. Uh, you know, I'll leave it to you guys. But, uh Okay, up next, Wall Street Journal. He says, um, you know, uh, how have you ch or how have you changed since the loss to Mayweather? And he said, you know, look, I'm experienced. I'm a complete fighter. I'm confident. Uh, you know, I have a higher ring IQ. And then how did Floyd do? <laughs> I like this question, actually. He said, how did Floyd do what he did to you? You know, basically, uh, and Canelo answered, he had more experience, okay? He had more championship fights, and he was like, now I'm the experienced one. You know, now I'm the veteran, and I'm getting in there with a guy that's never really been on this stage. You know, I've been on the stage with Cotto, with Mayweather, with Chavez, and, you know, this is nothing for me. So this is all, you know, according to him, you know, this is just uh, a walk in the park, and Golovkin is going to be starstruck, you know, just uh, mesmerized by the great Canelo, okay? According to Canelo, that's basically what he said, all right? Although, you know, the Kell Brook, what was there, like 40, 50,000 people in attendance for Kell Brook? And, you know, look, Golovkin, you know, he he's had his, his, uh, his moments in the sun, okay? I think uh, Canelo is really not giving him enough credit right there, so... Uh, let's see. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Yeah, now, okay, we're almost. Well, I'm about to get to the good shit, guys. Hang on, Canelo. Okay, he said I have had. Yeah, I've had bigger fights in Vegas. Now, that's another thing he threw in. He said he was talking about Vegas, and my mind immediately went to the judges. Like, why are you bringing up Vegas? Because they, one of the reporters said, you know, uh, are you, you know, are you? Do you think the fact that you will be more comfortable fighting in Vegas will that be an advantage for for Team Canelo and a disadvantage for Gennady Golovkin? And basically, you know, he just said, nah. First, I mean, first of all, he kind of agreed but then he was like no 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 you know it doesn't matter where it is you know I'm confident wherever it is kind of thing because I think Canelo knew that basically they were talking about the establishment the judges you know you're the cash cow you're the you know you're the protected fighter that kind of thing so he tried to kind of you know push that under the rug real quick so and uh, then, of course, now this is a question that I really like. I'm getting into the good stuff here. Uh, <clears throat> they asked about Jacobs, okay? And they basically said, you know, did you see any weakness in Jacobs that, you know, you think you're going to exploit on fight night? And they were like, yes, absolutely, yes. Now, this is where you could tell they got a little bit passionate. You know, they were like, look, we're coming up with a game plan. And yes, you know, we are going to expose what J we're going to do what Jacobs couldn't do okay so basically you know they are taking their whole their whole game plan is based on the Gennady Golovkin Daniel Jacobs fight and I thought that was really interesting and even his coach jumped in there and threw in a couple of words too so you know very uh you know I don't know very interesting and they use the word we're going to exploit him you know based on the mistakes that he made with Daniel Jacobs so Okay, now Lance Pugmire. This is this kind of pissed me off. Okay, the WBC. He basically brought up the WBC, and um, he's like, you know, we all know why. What is your deal with the WBC? You know, and will you ever, you know, mend that broken relationship? And he said, no. I've already answered this question, and basically, no comment. And Pugmire was just like, uh, okay, uh, you got, you got nothing, no, no, no comment at all. And basically, no, nope, no comment. I've already, you know, he said, whatever I said in the past, that's what it is. I mean, you know, come, I mean, what, you know, what a little diva thing to do. Now, look, I mean, even look, if Gennady Golovkin said something like that, I'd be telling you guys the same shit. 
what a diva thing you know it's like look these reporters man they you know they basically they're promoting your fight they're putting money in your pocket this is a real question that the real boxing fans want to know and your answer is no comment you know whatever i said is what i said you know basically fuck you and fuck the fans and you know uh next question please you know what the hell you know i did i did i did not like that okay um yeah, he basically said, you know, I've already talked about it and I'm not I'm not going to I'm not going to talk on it any further. So, you know, and he said, oh, he said, I will not repeat myself <laughs> like as if, you know, a, a parent is talking to a child like I'm not going to repeat myself, young man. You know, it's just crazy to me. Uh, and then, you know, Oscar De La Hoya jumped in there and tried to turn the tide and said, again, it'll be bigger than Hagler Hearns. OK, that kind of thing. We're coming to the end here now. Sparring. Someone brought up the question, you know, did, you know, did you learn anything from the sparring sessions with Gennady Golovkin? Now, I thought, now, look, I put out a video right now. It's at like 100,000 views and all the people in the comment section are like, oh, it's bullshit. You know, Canelo didn't learn anything. That was so long ago. Well, 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 motherfucking well. Can Canelo himself just said, yes, <clears throat> he said, I picked up on a lot of things that will never change. He's basing, I learned a lot of things about Gennady Golovkin that he still does today that I remember from back then. It was 2011, 2012, somewhere in there, right before the Mayweather fight. 2011, I believe, 2012. And he said, I remember. And he's like, and yes, I will take that to the fight and, and, and use what I remember and what I learned about him from back then during our sparring bam motherfuckers right there i mean all them people in the comment section talking all kind of shit there you go okay uh, another another question for canelo uh what is your he says what is your strategy okay will you open up more you know will you apply pressure will you come forward and he he said yes and this is where he was very adamant he's like yes i will i will do anything and everything to win i'll i'll apply pressure i'll come forward i'll let my hands go he even you know he even said that you know if he gets caught he gets caught now remember i told you guys whoever is most active will win the fight plain and simple this is this is one of those this is like two trains collide right here you know whoever puts the most coals in the engine is going to push the other one back all right i mean this is like whoever lets their hands go is going to win and i'm talking about in round one round one round two round three like those are critical rounds if gennady golovkin loses round one he's going to lose the fight mark my words people mark my words okay you know that round one he's got to show them right away and and basically you got canelo saying here no round one i'm coming out coming out guns blazing so we'll see you know hey we'll see um uh, you know, then they went on and said, basically, you know, would you fight Conor McGregor? And he, he didn't say no. He just said that it'd be a miracle if, you know, he, he got past Mayweather. So, but, you know, and see, he didn't say no. You know, they're talking all that shit about, you know, Mayweather McGregor, how, you know, it's a joke and this, that, and the other. But, you know, basically when they ask him the question, you know, would you fight him? He's like, eh, I'm not going to say no. <laughs> you know, I mean, now. A very interesting thing for, for all of you that have made it to the 18-minute mark. Uh, he went on to say, you know, look, my speed is better. My strength is better. And he said, I'm training between 172 and 175. Okay, bam, there's a bonus right there for listening. So, I mean, that's something I've always wanted to hear come directly from Canelo. Okay, he said, I, I'm training at 172, 175. Now, what does that mean? I'll break it down later. I'm trying to make it quick. Um and then basically he went on to say the winner of the fight should be, you know, should be crowned not only the best middleweight, but the best fighter in the world, pound for pound, okay, pound for pound. Now, you remember that should have been, you know, the, the Andre Ward Kovalev, but that never materialized, and we know why that never materialized. I'm not going to get into that either, but I think the winner of this particular fight here, I think it will determine who's pound for pound best, if you want my honest opinion. So anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it at that. You know, what do you think about the pictures, which I'm not going to comment on? What do you think about, uh, you know, the whole press uh, call today. I mean, you know, they're not very exciting, but 
but like I said, it's an update and just watch because every YouTube channel out there is they're going to put out 10,000 videos based on this call. And I just gave it all to you in 20 minutes. So one click, 20 minutes, leave your comment below. Thank you for watching.